Thank you very much again for giving me this great opportunity. I have been working here at the University of Tokyo since 2019. And as you can see in this slide, our research focuses on the robotics. As you know that the AI technologies can be utilized for making robots more intelligent. But in this talk, I'd like to focus on a little bit different topic, which is a neural diversity. We are very much interested in how humans acquire our intelligence, and also how we can utilize the AI technologies for better understanding the human intelligence. And as a topic of today's presentation, I'd like to pick up the neural diversity as a new target for using AI for better understanding. As you know, the numbers of the developmental disorders has been increasing drastically in the last decades. The numbers of their developmental disorders is gradually increasing this way, and then the current their numbers is said that 80.8% of children have been diagnosed or has a risk of developmental disorders. To cope with this recently changing the society, of course, the, our universities and also the companies have a great effort. For example, here, the University of Tokyo has been conducting their inclusive academia project. My collaborator, Professor Shinichiro Kumagaya, has been leading this project to change the research environment more comfortable for the diverse the individuals. And also the Microsoft research has been promoting their neurodiversity hiring pro program. They try to encourage their researchers and also their uh, workers who have the neurodiversity to work together with their typical developed persons. This is not just a volunteer work, because we know that the neurodiverse people have their strengths. For example, they are really good at absorbing the information. Also, sometimes they are very good at the create creative ideas. But still, there is some challenges for us to make our society really inclusive and diverse. One challenge is that the developmental disorders have been set as an invisible disabilities. For example, the children with developmental disorder often become panicked in a noisy environment. And we often don't know what we can do for them to better uh, adapt to the new environment. Because this is not so easy for everyone to understand what is the crucial problem for them. In contrast, the person with physical disorders, you can easily understand what help you can provide them. For example, if we see a person stuck in front of the stairs who is using a wheelchair, you can start providing the support to push it or to guide them to a slope. So here, we emphasize that the developmental disorders compared to their physical disorders are not so easy to understand. What is the critical problem for them? This is why we call it invisible disorders. So to address these challenges, we have been conducting the interdisciplinary research here at the University of Tokyo. Our goal is to visualize their disabilities, which the person with developing the disorders often suffer from. An important idea here is that the WHO had been suggesting that the disabilities might be caused by the interaction between the impairment and their environmental cause. For example, the person with developmental disorders may have some differences in their neural activities or their bodily functions. And then this impairment, in fact, with the environmental factors, produces their social disabilities. So by separating the cause of the disabilities in the daily activities, we can better understand what is the crucial problem for the person with developmental disorders. So to better understand the structures of the disabilities, we have been conducting the interdisciplinary project here at the University of Tokyo. 
The first approach we are taking is an AI approach, which is my measure. We develop the computational neural network model, which simulate our human brain, and then by modifying some parameters in the neural network model, we can simulate some modifications in the human brain. And then by interacting with the environment, we can find how this newer mechanism would produce some difficulties in the particular activities. And the complementary approach, which is combined with the AI approach, is called Tojisha Kenkyu, or first person study. Professor Shinjiro Kumagaya here at the University of Tokyo has been reading Tojisha Kenki for many years. Here the idea is that the researchers who have developmental disorders study their own cognitive styles from the first person perspective. This is why it's called Tojisha Kenkyu in Japanese. And by integrating this Tojisha Kenkyu, which start with the phenomenologies in the social disabilities, together with the AI research, we aim to better understand how the disabilities appears in our daily life. So I want you to give you two examples to explain how this interdisciplinary research can be achieved. The first example is the head mount display system we have already developed 10 years ago. This simulator can generate a typical visual perception that the person with development disorders often faces in their daily activities. Here the lady who has autistic child is wearing the head mount display to experience how the visual world looks differently from her own experiences. To develop this head mount display, we have invited their individuals with autism to come to our lab and then conducted the experiments where we asked the participants how the visual world looked like in her daily experiences. We asked participants to apply several visual filters to reconstruct their atypical visual perception. For example, she reported that when she go outside, she often see the very bright environment. Or if she goes to the very noisy, for example, the station, she often lose the color. Although she is not the color blind, but she sometimes lose the color in your visual world. And she even explained that she has the pain in her eyes. And you can see that she is always wearing sunglasses to avoid the pain in their daily activities. And we have been conducting the workshop where we invite the participants who have autistic families or also the autistic children to teach. And then we have found that experiencing their atypical perception using our head mount display system can help them to reduce the stigma or the negative feelings toward the autistic people. We found that the persons who don't know so much about the autism often also afraid of interacting with the person with autism. They don't know how they should interact with them, or sometimes they even have their negative feelings in their interactions. But by better understanding their perceptual experiences from the first person perspective, we realize that the individual who don't have autism or who don't have autistic perceptions can better understand the difficulties in autism, which result in the reduction of the stigma. This is a very important starting point for us to know how our AI technologies can be utilized for helping not only the person with ASD, but also the person who are taking care of their autistic children. But then we also came up with a research question, where these disabilities or differences come from? What neural mechanism may cause the differences between the typical and the atypical persons? So we first looked at the neuroscience studies and found out that the neuroscientists have been suggesting that our human brain works as a predictive machine. 
When we perceive the world, we of course utilize the visual, audio, and many their sensory signals coming from the environment. But our brain does not simply rely on such an incoming sensory signal, but utilizes our previous knowledges or experiences to make a prediction about the world. And here the important idea is that the brain tries to minimize the prediction error by integrating the top-down prediction from your internal model and also the incoming sensory signal, the brain can update its internal model to make the better prediction about the world, and also by changing the environment, which result in the change of the incoming sensory signal, the brain always tries to reduce the prediction errors. And another important idea is, here is that called Bayesian are influence ideas. How strongly your brain relies on your previous knowledge or incoming sensory signal seems to be determined based on the precision or certainty of their incoming sensory signal. For example, if you are in a very noisy and unclear environment, you cannot clearly see the world. In that case, you can utilize your previous knowledges to find a way to go outside, for example. Or if you are very new to the new environment, then you rely more strongly on the incoming sensory signal. So in this way, your brain can adaptively change your perceptual and actual experiences. Let me give you one example to show how your brain also works as a predictive machine. Here you can see the checkerboard on which the green cylinder is placed. And I want you to focus on the two regions, region A and region B. The question here is which region, A or B, looks brighter? I ask this question in every lecture, and actually there are 80% of students answer that region B looks brighter. I guess many of you also see that the region B looks brighter for you. But in fact, these two regions have their exactly the same luminance. Now I introduce two labels. You can now directly compare the brightness of these two regions. And now you realize that the two regions have exactly the same luminance. So what you have seen before is a kind of illusion you, when you perceive the world, you don't simply rely on the incoming sensory signal, but you utilize that knowledge about the world. Here, the region B is in the shadow. So even if it's not white region, it must be look brighter. That's your prediction. And then based on this idea, we try to understand how the neurodiversity can be also explained by the modification of predictive process ideas. Here is our hypothesis. So we start with the predictive processing ideas of the brain, but then we extend the Bayesian processes to explain how the developmental improvement and also the neurodiversity can be explained in a unified way. We know from the child study that human babies start with a very limited knowledge and also the immature perceptual stimuli. In that case, the both perception and sensation have less certainty. But then, through their experiences, the children acquire more precise knowledge and also their improved the sensory our perceptions. But then we can also think about the diversity by extending this. For example, the, for example some children have their very strong biases in their visual or also their uh, incoming sensory signal or top-down predictions. So in this way, this trajectory is a little bit shaped, and then you will see their kind of the biased patterns on the bottom left, bottom right, and the top left. And we have been suggesting that these two extreme patterns may correspond to the developmental disorders. So the neurodiversity can be explained as a continuum in this predictive processing. But however, the developmental disorders might be caused by the extreme patterns of this predictive processing. So to test this hypothesis, we conducted first experiment with human children. We designed a drawing experiment 
to investigate how diverse drawing abilities the children can show. On the tablet, only a part of the figures is already shown, and then children are asked to draw whatever they love. As you can see, that some children are still too young to complete the missing parts. For example, this boy was too young to fill the missing inner feature of the face. So he did that kind of scribbling. But when they get older, they make a prediction. So even if they see a part of the figure, they can imagine what is the intended figure by making, by utilizing their own internal model. And then in order to minimize a prediction error, they complete the missing parts. And we found that this boy is very, very creative. We gave a very challenging pattern for him. But you will find out that he's now creating the two stories of house by putting their layers uh, on the top and also they're adding the doors on the ground floor. So in this way, we can examine what kind of internal model they have already acquired and whether they have the abilities or the motivation to minimize the prediction error by adding the missing parts. This is the result of our analysis. We have collected the data from more than 100 children. So you can see quite diverse the drawing patterns here. Each dot corresponds to one child, and one child did the six different types of the drawings. And you first found the gradual, the developmental change from bottom left side to top right side. On bottom left side, you can see the many scribbling patterns. Its children often did the scribbling because they are still too young to make an imagination of the missing parts. But then when they get older, they also become better at filling the missing parts. Yet our interesting finding is not only in this diagonal trajectory, but also the very diverse patterns which is observed on the top left and bottom right. For example, on the top left side, we often observe the tracing patterns. One child just traced the existing lines instead of adding the missing parts. Or another child on the bottom right often drew our geometric patterns. He often ignored the presented the drawing patterns on the tablet, but he always drew what they want that he wanted to draw. Some other child also always drew a flower regardless of the incoming signal. So we thought that this diversity as well as the developmental change might be explained by the modifications in the predictive processing ideas. So again, to test our hypothesis, we designed our robotic experiments by integrating their neural network model based on the predictive processing. Here I want to show the first the, our experimental setup. Here is, you can see our humanoid robot iCup, and he's now drawing there on the uh, display. On the left side, we simulated a kind of a typical development of the drawing. You can see that the robot is now adding the missing features of the face and then completing the face patterns. But on the right side, you can see the scribbling patterns. Here, we utilize the exactly the same neural network model, but we only modify the network parameters to demonstrate the neurodiversity in the robot behaviors. So what kind of neural network model we used for generating these diverse behaviors? Here is an, our neural network model, which is relatively simple. We utilize the recurrent type neural network model, which can learn the trajectories. Here, the input is the trajectory of this drawing. It's a two-dimensional trajectory. And then the network predicts what is the next drawing patterns. And our interest here is to modify some parameters in the network model. Usually, the AI researchers try to optimize the parameters to get higher performances. This is a very common motivation for most of the AI researchers. But here, we rather de-optimize the parameters 
not only the way to higher performances, but also by de-optimizing de the parameter, we can see the diverse behaviors. Here we introduce the two parameters, and then by modifying their, especially the precision of the top-down predictions and the bottom sensations, we observed how this training data would be modified in the testing pattern. First, we, I'd like to show you the uh, result uh, where we modified only the precision of the top-down prediction, how strongly network relies on the predicted signal from the network. We modified the parameter H, which changes, which changes the precision or certainty of the top-down predictions. And first, you can see in the middle that the, when the network had the proper precision, which is H equal 1, the network was very successful in generating the predicted patterns. You can see the six different drawings in the middle column. But if you go to the left side, you can see that the network often produces a screening patterns. And especially in case of car, the network confused with the face. And as a result, the network produced the face pattern instead of car. And also, we observed that the human patterns and locate are often confused because they also look similar to each other. Why this kind of confusion occurred? We closely looked at the internal representation of the network. After the training, we analyzed what kind of internal representations were acquired in their neural network model. And we observed that their network also, the internal representation of the network also often confused. For example, the three drawing patterns, face, house, and the flower, which corresponds to red, yellow, and blue lines, are well separated when the parameter H was properly designed, whereas the, when the uh, parameter H was very small, the network acquired the completely overlapping attractors for the face and the house. This is a reason why the network often misinterpreted the intended patterns. And also, the, you can observe the third case where the H parameter was quite large. In this case, the network often made a scripting patterns as observed in the young children. This is a result where we modified only the precision of the top-down predictions. So what happens if we modify the incoming sensory signal? Here in the two-dimensional space, you can see that how the differences of the precision of sensory signal and the differences in the precision of top-down prediction would affect the learning behaviors. You can see from bottom left to top right, gradual improvement in their completion drawing was observed. Bottom left, you can see the scribbling pattern as observed in young children, whereas the top right showing the very nice completion patterns. And as observed in the human children, we also observed tracing patterns, or also their misinterpretation in the intended patterns, especially when the network has very extreme parameters. So this is a result of de-optimization of the network parameters. There, here, the interesting finding, again, is that there, we utilize the same, exactly the same neural network model but modified only two parameters. Just by modifying two parameters, we could observe not only the developmental improvement, but also the individual diversity observed in the development. So we suggest that the neurodiversity can be understood as a continuous modification in the brain activities. And furthermore, I'd like to emphasize that these predictive processing ideas can be also better explain more social behaviors. For example, the children with autism often get panicked in a noisy environment. They are often suffer from the noisy sound, and then they get panicked in their noisy environment. So the question is, why they really get panicked? Is this very like, kind of panic behaviors, or is it logical behavior? Our hypothesis based on the predictive processing suggests that by making the repetitive behaviors 
or also their stereotypical behaviors can uh, enable their children to change their world more predictable. The sound coming from the environment are unpredictable, but if children themselves can start screaming or start learning or jumping, they can change their surrounding sensory world more predictable. We think that in this way, we, they try to change their world in a predictive manner and thus to reduce the prediction errors. So although there are traditional studies suggesting that this is a little bit difficult situation, but we suggest that based on this predictive process and hypothesis, their stereotypical or repetitive behaviors are very logical to change their world in a more predictable way. So to conclude, I'd like to emphasize again that the AI research has a great potential to better understand human intelligence. Not only making AI more intelligent, but AI can be used as a tool to better understand the human intelligence. And especially, we focused on the neurodiversity. Some persons who have the developmental disorders often suffer from the self-understanding. They cannot well regulate their behaviors, and then they want to better understand their own cognitive processes. We hope that our AI research can help them better understand and also better be connected with the society. And especially the idea of predictive processing that coming from the neuroscience studies has a great potential to understand the continuum in our social behaviors. So I hope that you could also get an idea of the new ways of using the AI for better understand and also to improve our society. Thank you very much for your attention.